Okay, last but not least, we're going to hear from Dr. Patel. He's going to talk about um, occlusive disease of the visceral arteries. Respect the SMA. I will guarantee you, you'll be burned, and we've all been burned by what we think is not that critical of stenosis, and we'll work the patient up, and two days later, they've got dead bowel, and it usually means a dead patient. So the SMA is like the left main from our standpoint. It's a little unpredictable, and it goes down hard. Good afternoon, everybody. So for uh, mesenteric ischemia, medical treatment is got really no effective role as sole therapy. So if you have a patient with acute mesenteric ischemia or chronic ischemia, you want to make sure you aggressively resuscitate them, restore their urine output, correct their electrolyte abnormalities and metabolic acidosis, and if indicated, you can give them some IV antibiotics. For patients with chronic mesenteric ischemia, if you're going to do an open approach, you may want to consider TPN as a pre-op approach. Uh, to optimize their nutritional status to re reduce complications in the long run. So endovascular therapy, I think that's, in this day and age, I think most people would probably resort to an endovascular intervention if possible, especially for patients with chronic, chronic disease. The problem is re and symptomatic recurrence rates remain relatively high. It, the benefits are that there's reduced morbidity and mortality and also improved quality of life, uh, at least in the short run. Uh, again, the downturn, again, is worse long-term vessel patency and an increased need for reintervention. So if you do put a stat in someone, the main thing, like, like most endovascular approaches, you know, surveillance and monitoring, keeping an eye on these things to prevent a major catastrophe down the road. So again, like all endovascular approach for endovascular therapy, if you're going to work up these patients, the CAT scan is so key on planning your approach. In most cases, the SMA is generally a better approach from the brachial artery. Uh, for the celiac, you can go either way, depending on how the takeoff is of the celiac. If it goes up, the femoral approach might be better. If you see a downward angle, sometimes going from the arm is, is easier to get the stent in, and it just reduces your operative time if you've kind of thought that out before you made your access. Uh, again, st stent placement may complicate open surgery. So retrograde mesenteric stenting is actually a great way of dealing with acute mesenteric ischemia, uh, and it's usually done during the laparotomy for that procedure. Uh, the mortality is reduced down to 17% from 80% for an open bypass in an acute setting. So the advantages are when you do the laparotomy, you can evaluate the bowel, you can resect any dead bowel, uh, <laughs> clean things up, and then instead of doing a bypass that time, by you know, making a little arteriotomy, putting a stent in, you can decrease the OR time uh, significantly compared to an open bypass. Again, the disadvantages are inadvertent injury to the vessel. You can cause a dissection of the aorta with your wire, and also restenosis to the interval hyperplasia, especially in the short term. So when you have acute mesenteric ischemia, you're in the operating room, you usually dissect out the SMA, uh, you make a transverse arteriotomy distal to where you think the blockage is, you pass a Fogarty balloon distally or proximally into the artery, and you keep making passes until you get all clawed out and you got inflow reestablished. If at the area of the arteriotomy you've got significant plaque, sometimes you may have to convert your transverse arteriotomy into a longitudinal arteriotomy and repair that artery with a vein patch. So the exposure for the celiac artery is usually best achieved through a midline laparotomy. Uh, usually the SMA can be found at the base of the transverse colon mesentery or lateral to the fourth portion of the duodenum. So surgical techniques, there's multiple ways to revascularize uh, the, 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 me the mesentery and improve long-term success. Prosthetic grafts tend to have better patency than vein grafts. If you do need to use a vein, generally speaking, the main use for vein is if you have an infected field Obviously, it's a high risk for prosthetic infection. The femoral vein tends to work better, but obviously, uh, and it's going to increase your complexity and the time of the operation. Uh, Dacron graft is, I think, what most people use, uh, and that's first choice unless prosthetic is contraindicated. So for open options for chronic ischemia, you can do a transaortic endarterectomy. Uh, you can do a retrograde mesenteric bypass or an anagrade mesenteric bypass. Uh, for integrated bypass, it's excellent durability and symptom-free survival. It's best suited for an elective case. Uh, the bypass originates off the supraceliac aorta. The advantages are that the supraceliac aorta is generally not involved with atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic disease, and you can usually find a soft spot to clamp. And the limbs follow a direct path while maintaining a prograde flow. Uh, a retrograde bypass, it's not any better or worse in terms of long-term outcomes. Uh, the other advantage is that it originates from the inferorenal aorta or iliac artery. So again, what that does is it, it reduces your operative time because it can be exposed more readily and faster. 
there's less hemodynamic instability and potential for distal embolization. If there is thrombus within the aorta above the celiac, you clamp it, you can shower distally and create a, create a bigger problem. And there's a lower incidence of post-operative complications in the short run, not major complications, and there's a better 30-day mortality. Uh, the main disadvantage for a retrograde approach is how are you going to lay your bypass grafts? High potential for kinks if you don't lay it just right. Uh, so median arcuate ligament syndrome we spoke about earlier, and then NOMI, which is non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. So for median arcuate ligament syndrome, the main thing is if you have this diagnosis, it's you got to lyse that ligament to relieve the extrinsic compression. You know, putting a stent in or just doing a local angioplasty is not going to solve your problem. For non-occlusive disease, the treatment is directed towards improving the circulatory output of the patient. Uh, and in some cases, if it's bad enough, you can put a selective catheter into that, into that artery and directly inject vasodilators. You can do papaverin or nitroglycerin. For renal vascular disease, you can do an open repair, which you can do an aortal renal bypass. It's the most versatile. Usually use a greater saphenous vein. You could use the hypogastric or PTFE. Uh, you can do an aortal renal thromboendarterectomy, which is good if you've got bilateral or official disease. You can hit both arteries through one approach. Uh, for renal artery reimplantation, it's good for children with hypoplastic lesions. And again, you need a long and redundant artery for that to happen. I think most people nowadays for renal disease are going to use a percutaneous intervention. Most people do a balloon angioplasty and stent for an osteolesion, which is the most common for atherosclerosis. If it's FMD and you need to treat it, then PTA is sufficient. Uh, usually when you're working on the renals, you want to consider distal protection with a filter. Thanks.